Start right now. I am at this moment declaring a state disaster for all counties in the state of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott officially declaring a statewide emergency today because of COVID-19. In out San Antonio will be the first in the state to have a drive through testing available for first responders and medical staff, those most likely to come in contact with others who have been exposed to the virus. The governor said state officials have asked insurers to waive the cost of testing and telemedicine visits related to coronavirus. And that those who do not have insurance can be tested at cost by public health providers if they qualify. All this as now 39 people across the state have tested positive for COVID-19. Abbott saying he wants Texans to remain positive and that we will get through this together. Meanwhile, the mayor of San Antonio today declaring another public health emergency for the city after the first out of state travel related case of the novel coronavirus has been confirmed here. We have not been told the identity of that person who was diagnosed or where they've been while here in town. We do know they are in stable condition are in and are in self quarantine with their family. Meanwhile, more preventative measures have been implemented to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the Alamo City. As Evan Clark explains, it involves a joint effort between the public and community leaders. Everything will be fine. There is no excuse to go flying out there and taking all the hand sanitizers. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg asking people to stay calm and take heed to a list of temporary measures now in place following today's declaration of public health emergency. Prevention and containment are important goals. Part of the emergency declaration includes prohibiting crowds of 500 or more from gathering and also recommending against crowds of 250 or more from gathering. There are exceptions to the rule though for places like schools, shelters and houses of worship. The announcement made today after the first out of state travel related case of COVID-19 was confirmed in the city late last night. We have put strong plans and contingencies in place to to work with this. Though there is still no known community spread of the novel coronavirus here in San Antonio, first responders are ramping up preparedness efforts. We've been planning and we've had teams in place every other day that have met at the emergency operations center. Meanwhile, jury summons have been suspended until the end of April. That means that there'll be something like 2,000 less uh, people coming into the courthouse. County law enforcement officials saying that they plan to release some nonviolent offenders on personal recognizance bonds to reduce the jail population, which at times exceeds more than 4,000 inmates. Metro Health also announcing changes on the way for COVID-19 testing guidelines. In the meantime, they're urging those who do have symptoms to contact your health care provider and not go to the hospital emergency room. You could be exposing many, many, many of our healthcare workers. If our healthcare workers go down, this becomes a problem. And live out here in the medical center, you are taking a look at what Governor Greg Abbott spoke about today. This is the state's first drive through testing center, but we do want to emphasize that this is only for first responders or medical personnel who have come in contact with those who are infected. We do want to emphasize that Metro Health officials are still urging anyone who feels that they do have the coronavirus to go and contact their health care provider or go to an urgent care clinic because those those are the places that can recommend you to actually get the test. You cannot come here if you are someone in the community. This is again only for first responders and we also want to mention that that declaration that was made today by the mayor is going to be in place for seven days unless council votes to extend it for another 30 days. And this just in, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf has also declared a state of emergency for Bear County. For more details on that, just visit KSAT.com. For now, reporting live in the Medical Center. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Devin. Well, as expected, many of the local school districts are doing what colleges and universities already did, extended their spring breaks. We have the list that's been growing all afternoon on our website. Now, Jesse de Gallado is live outside a high school in Northside ISD, the city's largest. Jesse, what effect is this going to have on students and employees um, there at Northside? Well, Patty, perhaps it's not the case here at Holmes High School, but among Northside's 106,000 students, I'm told there are many who may get their only nutritious meal of the day while at school. We have many families in Northside who rely on uh, the, the child nutrition department and the services provided in our school cafeterias uh, to, to get their nutrition. So we want to make sure that we find a way to address those. 
Now, how to go about that through this now extended spring break through next Friday is still being worked out, as you heard. That, as well as any opportunities for what he calls distance learning outside the classroom. Pettis says that kind of information will be posted on its website. Also, any updates are certainly posted on their social media. Now, Pettis says Northside is aware of the serious impact its decision will have on working parents who now need to find child care if they don't already have that figured out. And many of those working parents are Northside employees, but Pettis says that there's a possibility that many of them will be able to return next week, but again, that decision has yet to be made. Now, Pettis says like other Northside, like other school districts, they had anticipated that this day could come because many students, of course, had been traveling. But he says it's for that reason and others, its decision was not taken lightly, uh, given certainly those public health emergencies that have been declared. And now, of course, that city's first COVID travel-related case here in San Antonio. We're live in the Northside School District. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Jesse. Now for Catholics, the coronavirus has now reached right into their worship plans. The Archdiocese of San Antonio issuing a decree giving dispensation to Catholics for all Sunday mass obligations. This means starting this weekend, public masses in parishes and chapels will be suspended. Through the end of the month, funeral services and small gatherings may take place, but large gatherings are highly being discouraged. The Archdiocese is instead suggesting Catholics participate in worship through Catholic television or other electronic media. Around the world and right here at home, we are seeing schools close and large scale events canceled very quickly. We now know Fiesta 2020 is not canceled, but it has been officially postponed to November 5th through the 15th. Max Massey spoke with local leaders at today's Fiesta Commission announcement about the plan moving forward first public health. The mayor and the Fiesta Commission tell me that the top factor in their decision to postpone Fiesta is the public's health and safety. I think we're taking an appropriate uh, approach uh, to ensure the pu public safety, but at the same time not, you know, not let life totally hold still. The plan right now is to push Fiesta to November. All of this in hopes that the coronavirus pandemic calms in the coming months. But the postponement does have some local leaders skeptical. Is this all going to get done within six months? After? That usually takes a year to plan and execute. Of course, Fiesta represents the culture, the history, and the tradition of San Antonio. But there's also the economic impact. $340 million and almost 3,500 equivalent full-time jobs. We will get Fiesta. Um, you know, I think it's also important for the spirit of this community. We, you know, we've been through a lot here just in the last month. And so having that to look forward to will help, uh, you know, revive our community spirit. Most important is the health aspect. Councilwoman Via Gran recently met with Vice President Mike Pence. They discussed the coronavirus in Texas and San Antonio. She says they spoke extensively about education and preparedness. There are supposed to be more coronavirus test kits coming out today, Friday, released. I'm hoping this happens and hoping that it continues to work uh, to move forward. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Well, vendors gearing up for the 2020 Tejano Music Awards Fanfare and St. Patrick's Day Festival and River Parade this weekend are repacking their merchandise following the mayor's declaration of a public health emergency. The fanfare, along with the festival and River Parade, were scheduled to start this weekend. Musicians, vendors for uh, Tejano Fanfare already setting up at Market Square say they were expecting a cancellation could happen because of the epidemic, but they're still not happy about it. We got family, so we're, we're actually here to see the family too after the event, but so we're just going to do that a little longer instead of staying here, but you know, maybe next year it'll clear up by then and uh, we'll come back. And vendors who travel across the nation for these types of festivals say this and other cancellations in other cities will hurt their bottom line as they gear up for the summer rush. And we've been saying it most of the week now, the cancellations, postponements and closures have been coming in quickly and often. We are keeping track of all of them right now on our website at ksat.com, and we are updating them as soon as they come in. The updates are also going into the ticker you now see at the bottom of your screen throughout our newscast. To see the most up-to-date list, just look for them on the homepage at ksat.com. Shoppers looking to get soap, hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, and other items are seeing empty shelves and long lines as people are hitting the stores very hard this week. But stores like HEB are telling their customers there is plenty of product and no need to panic while shopping. HEB has put some limits, though, on the following items, disinfecting sprays and wipes, 
rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer and hand soap, a limit of four each for those items, bleach and toilet paper, you're allowed to just have two of those. Governor Greg Abbott says this isn't like getting ready for a hurricane. There's no need to stock up on those supplies. While the rush has been on to stock up on essentials, San Antonio Water System says the rush to get bottled water is not necessary. San Antonio Water is safe to drink. The utility sent out a reminder saying water provided by SAWS is always been reliable and safe for use on your everyday activities. SAWS also highlighted the process of how that water is delivered, saying there is no concern about the coronavirus being transmitted through the water system. And SAWS is a 24-7 operation that will continue to provide water to the city under all circumstances. Let's take a look at your Friday commute with time saver traffic. It is pretty quiet out there. You're looking at 281 South at Loop 410. Usually this is a very busy spot this time of day. It is spring break. Uh, maybe a lot of folks started their weekends early after all of this uh, that has been happening today, but very quiet out there on the roads there at 281 and Loop 410. All right, and we do have a mostly cloudy sky right now. The clouds broke earlier today, then they're starting to fill back in right now. But it's on the warm side, especially relative to mid-March. The aquifer did take a hit today. It's down nearly half a foot, but we're still around three feet above the March average. All right, here it is for you. The infamous oak pollen reading. It's higher today, the count of over 1,300. Mold is high, hackberry and mulberry on the low end. And just a reminder that usually oak season peaks in late March through early April. So we're getting there and we'll continue to see that number climb. Temperature wise right now, 83 in San Antonio. That's at the airport. Stinson, 81, 81 Holotus and some 70s in the hill country. We have some changes to talk about for the weekend forecast and next week's rain chances coming up. When cancer patients are administered chemotherapy, it can mean long hours sitting in a chair in a room with nothing around but medical equipment. But now researchers want to know how nature might calm these patients and help the healing process. Ursula Perry shows us new research is proving there is a difference. Cancer patients spend long hours alone in a room. I need to get chemo. It takes usually seven, eight hours. So researchers are studying whether views of nature impact a patient's healing. Using a traditional room, a virtual reality room, and one with a view of a luscious outdoor garden, they are measuring pain, blood pressure, and saliva cortisol, which indicates stress. We have so many patients, especially first time coming in here, not knowing what to expect. So anxious, so tense. You can see the fear in their face. And then when you give them such a spectacular view, such a natural view, um, it instantly relaxes them. The project is the brainchild of Ashley and her colleague Renee Stebbins, who secured funding to build the garden on a previously empty rooftop outside the chemo rooms. As a dietitian, I do believe we have this innate connection to nature. Our food comes from nature. We are part of nature. The virtual reality goggles allow patients to interact with nature scenes that are filled with animals in the wild. Lots of beautiful wildflowers. Meanwhile, the room with no view or virtual reality. In a room like this, you feel pretty isolated. But in a room like garden that you got view to look out, it is a big difference. The study, which will include 36 cancer patients, is still underway. It's being funded by a conservation group that wants to see how nature affects our lives. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. It is definitely spring out there. The flowers are blooming and the pollen is popping. And a lot of people are sneezing. Yes, that's right. And, you know, it's that time of year I showed you earlier. Oak yeah. is on the rise. We're really seeing it jump. That gets, gives you the itchy eyes. One thing that always helps my family is make the kids shower or take a bath before bed. It and, lingers in yeah, your hair. Even yourself, right? Yeah. It helps. Uh, so that's one thing that I've learned from good old Dr. Estrada and his crew. <laughs> oh, allergists, right? You got to go once a week and get those shots, but it helps. All right, so here's a look at our weather headlines. Yes, yeah, spring is in the air and... You know, sometimes we look forward to spring for some spring showers. Well, I think we have better chances of rain next week. That's our third weather headline there. Not quite as warm on Sunday. I'm seeing, seeing a bit of a cooling tread just briefly. Otherwise, tomorrow is going to be more of the same.
So let's talk about this. What's happening outside? 85 degrees, our high temperature, well above our average of 73 again today. And even our morning low of 67 was a good 17 degrees above average. Sign of spring. We hit 90 in Carrizo Springs, 91 in Catula. But look at the difference here just between Carrizo Springs and Del Rio, right? Del Rio 78 and then up to 90 in Carrizo Springs. That's not much real estate to cross there for that kind of a temperature difference. All sunshine dependent today. Temperatures completely were sunshine dependent. Most of us had the low clouds this morning, but notice how that cloud deck, it really dissipated from the southeast to the northwest and folks in the hill country and even in Val Verde County never cleared out, whereas other locations did and it's still impacting the temperatures. Right now 91 in Catula, but 68 in Rock Springs, 76 in Kerrville, and we're now 80 degrees in Beeville and 79 Gonzales. So you get the idea there, big temperature difference across our area and not just South Texas, but the whole state. You look farther north, 46 in Lubbock, 40 in Amarillo right now. They also have a lot of cloud cover and they've had some passing showers. Yeah, they've been blessed with some rain. We could use it down here in San Antonio, but odds are not very favorable over the next couple of days. This disturbance here with good energy and moisture out ahead of it. Oh, look at all that moisture. That's staying too far to the north of us. But this next disturbance that's right now near Seattle and actually a pretty weak one, it should strengthen over the coming days and set itself up as we get into the weekend in a more favorable position for rain chances for next week. So we don't foresee a whole lot of activity on the radar screen the next few days, but by the middle part of next week, if this goes as planned, we'd be in a pattern that's more favorable for some showers and storms. All right, so here's a breakdown for you. Tomorrow morning, right near 70, 83 in the afternoon. I think we'll have some morning fog, late day sun, maybe a stray pop up rogue shower in the afternoon. Sunday, a 20% chance and otherwise just a cloudy day, but I do think it's going to be noticeably cooler. Right now, indications are a little cool front will drop south and could drop our temperature to 70 for the high here in town. Then we get into next week and we'll take a look at those rain chances up to 30% on Monday, but it looks like they'll peak at about 50 60% Wednesday and Thursday. Now, this is one of those tricky cut off upper level lows. We, uh, often see. So these numbers will be modified here in the coming days. You'll have to check back in uh, for any specific day or time. I hope those numbers go up. Definitely. Yeah, I hope so too. So many cancellations, so many things up in the air in the sports world. Yeah, and I feel very bad for seniors in colleges who now they're going to give them an extra year of eligibility for those people who are being kind of set aside during the coronavirus and their ability to continue their college careers. But at the same time, what about high school, in particular the Boys State High School Basketball Tournament? We have three area teams right now in limbo. We'll investigate that for you. And the Masters postponed for the first time since World War II. Coming up. I was kind of, you know, like scared, you know. That was Cole High School star Vince Watsiku following the Cougars 58 to 44 victory over Pizza in the Class 3 state semifinals in the Alamo Dome for the UIL suspended the rest of the tournament in big board sports. The decision by the UIL to suspend the boys high school state basketball tournament as a result of the coronavirus have left a number of questions unanswered. The first of which, when would it resume? The Cole Cougars are left wondering if they'll face Dallas Madison for the state title with both Brandeis and the Wagner Thunderbirds never got a chance to even get on the court. More here's our Jessica Hunt. Amid growing concern over COVID-19, the UIL Boys State Basketball Tournament was suspended on Thursday. Now those associated with the three San Antonio programs still playing, Cole, Wagner, and Brandeis are hopeful that they will be able to play for a state championship in the future. I will tell you it is our goal, it is our hope, it is our intention to complete this tournament. San Antonio's Cole played in the last game before the decision went into effect. It's definitely an unfortunate situation for, for everybody. Um, you know, these kids, they work so hard to get to this point. Disappointment may be an understatement for the 33-3 and Brandeis Broncos. 
who were making their first appearance in the state tournament. As a coach, that's your goal is to coach in the state tournament. To get a team there with a group of kids that are so deserving, it's definitely heartbreaking. And first, it's just devastating. You know, we've been working our whole season for this, and we finally got here. I'm super excited to go play in the Alamo Dome. The Wagner Thunderbirds, who are making their fifth overall appearance in the state tournament. We're ready to seek revenge on a Mansfield Timberview team that had beaten the Thunderbirds in the 5A state finals a season ago. I just felt bad for them with 12 seniors, you know, this is their last hurrah and who wants to end it like this, you know. With a rescheduled date up in the air, coaches will have to keep players motivated indefinitely. One of the things we're going to have to try to find reasons for them to be as excited again. But as of now, players say they're ready to take the court whenever they need to. Just taking one day at a time, whether we prepare for a week, two weeks, it doesn't matter, we're going to be ready when the game comes, if it comes. Everybody's staying in the gym, everybody's staying ready and sharp. We're not uh, relaxing because you never know what's going to happen. The UIL has indicated that they just don't have enough information at this time to make a decision concerning makeup dates. But they did note that there are contingency plans in place for all of the championships that have yet to be played. Reporting from the Alamo Dome, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Jessica. While the 2020 Valero Texas Open has been canceled, the Masters has just been postponed. The Valero Texas Open was supposed to be played from April the 2nd to the 5th at the JW Marriott TBC resort course just before the Masters at Augusta, April the 9th through the 12th. The PGA Tour making the decision to not only cancel the Valero Texas Open, but the remaining players championship this week. We actually caught up with former Spur Bruce Bowen, who is playing the same course today that the pros are supposed to compete on next month. Walking down the 18th, it was more like what could have been. You think about how they set up tents and a lot of people are disappointed. It's not a bad thing that they're disappointed. It's just this is something that they've never dealt with before. And so, you know, there's a lot of disappointment in the air and hopefully we can get to a point where, you know, we can get past that disappointment because we get back to what we consider as daily routine. Look at that. They're already tearing down the venue here. The Masters has never been held outside of March and April has been played uninterrupted for 74 years, only not played in 1943 and 1945 due to World War II. So that just raises the significance of whatever body is going through, not just in your personal life, but also in the world of sports. It's often such an escape for us, too. It, it, it usually is. Not anymore. Thank you, Greg. Sure. Still to come at six, we should all be doing it anyway, but good hygiene is a key weapon in keeping the coronavirus away. But the experts say we should be doing every day. And what's being done on the national level to slow down the spread of COVID-19? Next at 6. A state of disaster declared in Texas this afternoon and a couple of hours later, the coronavirus is officially a national emergency. Daryl Forges from Atlanta now with how the Trump administration is tackling the coronavirus crisis. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. President Trump laying out his strategy to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus. The action I am taking will open up access to up to $50 billion. And at the state level, officials across the country taking steps to protect their citizens. In Louisiana, the presidential primary now being delayed. The threat we face from the COVID-19 virus is an unprecedented threat and unlike any we have faced. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo opened a drive through testing facility in New Rochelle, a suburb of New York City, hard hit by the virus. The number one thing we have to do in this country and in this state to slow the spread is testing. Colorado, Texas, and Washington among the states also working to increase the capacity of drive through testing facilities. Texas is taking additional action to mitigate the spread of the virus and to protect the public's health and safety. Meanwhile, the partial travel ban for people traveling to the U.S. from Europe goes into effect tonight at midnight for the restricting movement to and from the United States. And the big issue across the country is the lack of testing. The president says that more drive through tests will be available and also over a half a million tests will be available by next week. In Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Daryl Forges. Senator Ted Cruz saying he is extending his self-imposed quarantine after finding out he came into contact with a second person who tested positive for the coronavirus. He announced his initial quarantine Sunday after learning he had been in contact with someone at the CPAC conference who tested positive. That quarantine was set to end Thursday, but then Cruz learned that a Spanish party leader he met on March 3rd 
tested positive as well. Now, the two men took pictures together and shook hands twice. Cruz says he is extending his self-quarantine until Tuesday. And that will be a full 14 days from his meeting with the second person. You can add the Boston Marathon to the list of big-time sporting events that have now been postponed due to the coronavirus. Uh, that announcement coming today from the Boston Athletic Association. The organization says the decision to postpone was made after talking to city and state leaders about the best ways to curb the spread of COVID-19. The event has now been moved from April 20th to September 14th. And with the number of coronavirus cases escalating in the U.S., many people are worried about protecting themselves and their families from the disease. Marilyn Moritz has more information on the correct ways to wash hands and clean common areas. Short of total isolation, good hygiene remains the most effective way to mitigate the spread of illness. This means regularly washing hands and disinfecting common areas in the home. Experts recommend people wash hands with soap and water, scrubbing for a minimum of 20 seconds before rinsing them off. If soap and water aren't available, use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Hands should be washed often, but especially after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing, using the restroom eating or preparing food, and had any contact with animals. People should also avoid touching their faces. Properly disinfecting your home and car is another way to combat the spread of illness. High traffic areas should be regularly cleaned. Think kitchen counters, tables, light switches, bathrooms, doorknobs and handles, steering wheels. Use disposable gloves while disinfecting and discard them after use. Any surfaces that are visibly dirty should be washed with soap and water before disinfecting. EPA registered products containing at least 70% alcohol should be effective for solid surfaces. But what about your laundry? Dirty clothes and linens should be cleaned with the hottest water possible based on manufacturer's recommendations and dried completely. Clothes hampers should be disinfected and again, hands should be washed after handling dirty laundry. And don't forget about the gadgets. Use alcohol wipes to clean phones, tablets and remote controls. Be sure to clean the entire device, front, back, sides, buttons, protective cases. For more on good cleaning practices, reach out to a local health department or visit the CDC's website at cdc.gov. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Something experts say is not helpful for healthy people trying to avoid getting sick, respiratory masks. The only people who should worry about wearing a mask are those who are already sick or those who are caring for someone who is sick. The milestones keep falling for Queen Elizabeth, the landmark she passed just by staying around for so long. Still to come. And an unlikely company is getting into the chicken sandwich war. How 7-Eleven could be looking to ruffle some feathers. First Around America, major cuts are announced today. Cuts due to the coronavirus. According to the carrier Delta, these cuts are deeper than after the 9-11 attacks, citing fall off in demand unlike anything the company has ever seen. An overall capacity reduction of 40% in the next few months is expected. The CEO of the company says that he isn't taking a salary cut uh, or salary for the next six months. No layoffs uh, or furloughs have been announced. Janine Jones convicted of killing two babies and she's suspected in the deaths of dozens more. This Monday, KSAT's News at 9 taking a deep dive into the story behind one of the most shocking suspected serial killers in Texas history. Here's a sneak peek. We all want to know why, and I don't know if we ever will. There is no telling what damage Jane Jones had caused. A new charge against a convicted murderer known as the Angel of Death. It's real people that have real, um, that have a real stake in it, and there was a lot of stakeholders. I trusted you with my daughter. It could have been anyone's child. You should have to serve one year for every year of life you robbed from the babies that you murdered. How could you do something like this to an innocent child? A baby in a casket for anybody. It's hard, you know, and to know that he was murdered. We cannot, as a society, 
allow that to go unpunished. This is one of those cases that you just don't forget. In a Killer's Care airs this Monday night on KSAT's digital-only newscast, The News at 9. You can watch it online at KSAT.com or any way you stream. Here's a live look outside right now. Beautiful day. Not too bad, but there were some clouds this morning. Yeah, we had the low clouds, and they actually lingered around pretty much all day in some parts of South Texas. So there was a big temperature difference between some 60s and 70s in Hill Country to 90 degrees in Carrizo Springs and Catula. So more of the same tomorrow in terms of morning clouds, some afternoon sun and similar temperatures. Then I don't think we're going to be quite as warm on Sunday. Rain chances are actually looking a little more promising for next week. Tell you all about it coming right up. Tech company Apple is back in business in China. As of this week, all 42 Apple stores have reopened there. The stores were closed back in February out of an abundance of caution due to the coronavirus outbreak. A company spokesperson says the stores have been gradually reopening for the past few weeks. Well, if you thought the buzz over chicken sandwiches was going to die down, think again. Watch out Chick-fil-A, Popeyes and Wendy's. 7-Eleven now is getting into the chicken fray. The convenience store chain says it's opened a chicken and biscuit restaurant in New York. Yeah, the Raised the Roost in-store restaurant includes on its menu chicken sandwiches, wings and fried chicken tenders. Raised the Roost also offers signature sauces and breakfast sandwiches. The food is both made to order and put out as grab and go options. 7-Eleven says it put the restaurant in one of its evolution stores, which are designed to offer different specialty items. No word yet on when or where those raise the roost restaurants will be showing up next. So maybe you can try that see. one. Well, the, uh, the longest, uh, the longest she's queen, the more milestones are going to ac accumulate for Queen Elizabeth. This week, she became the fourth longest reigning monarch ever. Now, she surpassed Mayan ruler Bacall the Great by serving as the British monarch for 68 years and 34 days. But King Louis the 14th of France still has top honors. He ruled for 72 years and 110 days. Queen Elizabeth became the longest ruling monarch in UK history in September 2015, surpassing her great great grandmother Queen Victoria congratulations to her if you have a special piece of jewelry you only wear on special occasions well today may qualify March 13th is National Jewelry Day a day to celebrate those precious items and the people who make them shine it's not a day to honor folk artist jewel though you could do that if you wanted to as <laughs> for where National Jewel Day came from that will remain a mystery. We'll never know, Adam Kasky. Which means it's <laughs> not really a thing. Okay. Made up by some We've jewelers It's settled. Somewhere. It's done. Okay. You know what a thing is, though? Hmm. All that pollen. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we have, uh, we've got signs of spring all over the place. Oh, some yeah. good, some not so good. Some just a side effect of springtime yeah. and what we have around here. So we're going to start talking about that and take a look at the pollen count, and then we'll jump into the forecast for the weekend because we did tweak the weekend forecast a little bit, particularly on Sunday, and more promising rain chances into next week. All right, here's a great sign of spring, the blue bonnets. You see them all over the place right now. They have popped, they're in bloom, and they're looking great. And here's actually another great shot from Seguin yesterday evening. Ah, isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous picture there. So yeah, clearly that's a sign of spring. But so is the oak pollen. And if you look on your vehicle, if you park outdoors for any extended period of time, especially if you're near oak trees, you'll see the little, little pollen clumps, little pollen grains clumped together on parts of your hood and windows and whatnot. And they even leave those little streak marks as well. Uh, oak is high. It's much higher than yesterday. It's the highest it's been so far this year, and it's going to continue to climb. It's at over 1,300. It typically peaks in late March, to early April and then by mid April we're done with it. So we just have to make it through the next month basically and then we'll be rid of the oak pollen. All right, dew points are up as well. So feeling like spring out there. Dew points for the most part in the 60s or low to mid 60s. So we're feeling muggy, but it's not oppressive. This is basically what we're used to around here most of the year and temperature wise huge difference. You go from 90 degrees Catula at 91 actually 88 Carrizo Springs to only 76 in Del Rio, then 68 right now in Rock Springs. Why the big difference? It's not a cold front or anything that's overhead. 
it's all cloud cover and the clouds really stuck around in the hill country and even Valverde County. And speaking of even cooler conditions, you get up into the panhandle and we're talking 40s. So you go from 92 in Laredo to 40 in Amarillo. Hello, Texas weather, right? Look at that difference. And one reason too we're seeing some cooler air is just the general pattern that we have, some surface components, but also the extra clouds and some passing showers. They're lucky to get the rain in parts of North Texas today. Unfortunately, could, could come at a cost West Texas into New Mexico where this, uh, this, this red box indicates a tornado watch that's until 10 p.m. So they could have some severe weather out in West Texas this evening, but this is part of this upper level system that's got a lot of moisture and energy out ahead of it. I mean, even dumping some heavy snow in parts of the plains. It's too far to the north to bring us any good rainfall. We have slight chances this weekend of a few pop ups, but I think more promising chances from this disturbance that's currently over Seattle. Over the weekend, it's going to drop down the West Coast, cut itself off from the main flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere and basically become its own little independent upper level circulation. And by the middle of next week, that should position itself to give us a more favorable pattern for rainfall. This southwesterly flow aloft, more upper level moisture from the Pacific and stronger little bursts of upper level energy could give us those better chances, which is why we've boosted these rain chances from 40% Tuesday to 60% on Wednesday, and even 50% on Thursday. So much better coverage spatially is what we're expecting at some point in the middle part of next week. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty with those cutoff upper level lows, so we'll continue to keep you updated on these numbers as they will be modifying and changing a little bit uh, over the coming days, but we'll keep you updated on it. Tomorrow morning, some areas of fog, especially in the hill country, otherwise low clouds, and then we'll start to see some sunshine breaking out into the afternoon, just like today. We'll go from 68 in the morning to 83 in the afternoon, and then by Sunday, it looks like a little cool front's going to pay us a visit. And that could limit us to only about 70 degrees for an afternoon high temperature on Sunday with some warmer readings farther south of town and a 20% chance of a pop up shower or thunderstorm. But again, those better chances into next week. And other than that little bit of a cool down on Sunday, if you want to even call it that. For the most part, we're going to be in the 70s to near 80. It's a really long stretch of uh, days with the chance for rain. We haven't seen that in a while. No, we haven't. That's another sign of spring right there, that kind of pattern. So let's hope this really pans out well for us. Has the potential to. We just need it to follow through. All right. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, in case you missed it, it's coming up next. Classes canceled and districts extending their spring break amid concerns over COVID-19, leaving working parents wondering what they'll do with their students. Tonight, a local daycare is preparing for a possible increase. All right, here's today's In Case You Missed It. It is Friday, March 13th. Take precautions to avoid the spread of illness. Everything will be fine. A message of reassurance uttered by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg didn't overshadow a list of changes to normal routines for local entities and the public. The declaration of public health emergency will prohibit large gatherings of 500 people or more. We are strongly advising that people do not have gatherings of 250 or larger. Precautions are also being taken within the local judicial system. Judge Peter Sakai announcing that jury summons will be suspended until the end of April and some trials will be put on hold as well. Concerns over the coronavirus also forcing the city to postpone Fiesta today. San Antonio's biggest party of the year now pushed back to November 5th through the 15th. Economic impacts uh, pale in comparison to the human impact if we were not to get this right in terms of prevention. And our first and most important responsibility is protecting the public health. A San Antonio police officer was taken to the hospital overnight after running into the side of an 18-wheeler. Police say their fellow officer was traveling southbound the AT&T Parkway when he ran into the side of a big rig. He was taken to SAMHSA with minor injuries, a possible dislocated shoulder, but he's expected to be okay. No other injuries were reported. A heartwarming photo has gone viral. It's a police officer sharing pizza with a homeless woman. A Wednesday, he came across a homeless woman I'd never seen before. He said, God put it on my heart to get her lunch. So I turned around and asked her, hey, did you eat today? And she said, no. So he grabbed pepperoni and cheese pizza from a nearby pizza shop, sat down on the grass, as you see right there next to her. They shared the pizza. He said that was great, but the conversation was even better.
If you are looking for the most up-to-date information on cancellations, suspensions, and other changes due to the coronavirus, just head over to KSAT.com. The cancellations, postponements, and closures have been coming in very quickly this week. We're doing our best to keep track of all of them on our website, and we're updating them as soon as they come in. So to see the most up-to-date list, just look for them on the home page, and we're also putting them on a ticker uh, on the screen during our newscast as well. So as we go into the weekend, more of the same tomorrow, some low clouds early, leading to some afternoon sunshine. 83 that I think will trim down the temps a little bit, a little closer to 70 on your Sunday with low clouds. And at any point really throughout the weekend, we could have a few showers pop up or even a brief thunderstorm, but better chances of rain into next week. I mean, we get to the middle part of the week and we're boosting those rain chances a little closer to 60%. That's the way it stands right now with what looks like a more promising weather pattern for those rain chances. We just need it to follow through. And of course, we'll be fine tuning that forecast and we'll keep you updated on how things change between now and then. As for temperatures, the low point will be Sunday at 70 and the warmest I think will be really tomorrow at 83. Otherwise, 70s to near 80 next week. So nothing severe. You know, right now, I don't necessarily think so, but it's too early to tell. Yeah. It's Keep an eye always on. a possibility when something pops up, but nothing to be concerned about right now. Thank you, Adam. That's all of our time. We'll see you back here for the night beat at 10. Don't forget Patty on the 9.